So are you believing this? Eric Cantor, the seventh term, seventh district representative of the state of Virginia, the House Republican majority leader, lost. The first person to have done so since, get this, not 1999, 1899, long before Prince was even born, let alone thought of, let alone an idea of a person like Prince existing. 1899. Why did this happen and who beat him? David Bratt, this man, 49 years old, college professor at Randolph Mason College. 1,200 students, as big as a class at Berkeley, a large class of course, and an economics professor, and a so-called Tea Party conservative. Now, let's think about that for a second. Tea, Tea Party conservative. Interesting. Because I happened to find a paper written by the same Professor Blatt, this one, where Professor Blatt, hey, says that No Child Left Behind, remember that program? while analyzing it for its some problems as part of an analysis of Virginia education, says that he believes it's good for the country and basically an excellent program. He says this in his conclusion in the paper, which you can find at zenny62.com or zenny62blog.com if you like, and read it. I am not kidding you, because on his campaign website, he says he opposes government top-down programs, and he specifically lists, you got it, no child left behind. So, which David Bratt are we getting? The guy who's really the economic and analyzing fellow who, who would lead to a liberal conclusion, or the guy who says he's a Tea Party conservative? Well, let me tell you something. For people who don't pay attention, who play their politics divisively like the PT party folks do, they can be easily fooled by a David Bratt. David just happened to come along at a time when Eric Cantor was seen as too cozy with President Obama, so off with his head. But they never really gave any thought to who they were going to select to replace him, and so here comes Bratt, who has very cleverly and intelligently figured out that if he just uses the term free market, or he speaks about having jobs for Americans, and if he professes a love of God and quotes scripture, that the people in his district will eat that up like pablum, they'll never know the difference, and he'll sail right into office. Maybe. It was a long shot. It was a crapshoot. But you know what? It worked. It worked because not just that there was a low turnout, but you have an electorate in Virginia that is becoming increasingly anti-intellectual by the year. They're so bad that they actually chased out the movie industry for, in some cases, suspicion regarding certain movies that were Hollywood that were going to be made there at a time when other states, like, for example, Georgia and Illinois, are capturing the movie business. It kind of makes you go, duh, doesn't it? Or you've got this photograph that was put out by the Bratt campaign, which shows Eric Cantor and... Mark Zuckerberg, the founder and CEO of Facebook together, and basically chastises Cantor for, quote, giving the government basically 20 million more foreign-born workers rather than jobs for 20 million Americans, which really isn't true at all. But here is the undercurrent. Here is the dog whistle anti-Semitism that's at play right in your face. Eric Cantor and Mark Zuckerberg are Jewish, and Eric Cantor is the only Jewish Republican right now, as I speak, in the House of Representatives, actually in Congress, not in the House of Representatives, excuse me. He may be joined by Ellen uh, Khan, uh, uh, Carr if he wins at the in the 33rd district race in California, but I digress for a moment. The bottom line is Cantor is the only Jewish representative in the House for among, among Republicans, okay? So, it it's very easy for people who are white supremacists at Stormfront and Vidare to point and say, oh, look, by the way, both Cantor and Mark Zuckerberg are Jewish. And, oh, we don't like that. 
Even Eric Cantor himself talked about anti-Semitism among House Republicans. So this stuff doesn't look so good for conservative folk, conservatives, folks. Who's challenging him? Jack Trammell, this man, from the same college. That's right. They're going to have a party there. It'll be a lot of fun. How often does that happen? I can't remember. So there's your race. And I encourage you, however, to read the document regarding No Child Left Behind in Education and, and, and then ask the hard question about this guy. But the bottom line is the Tea Party can't win at the high levels for long. Here's why. Remember Alan West, the black Tea Party conservative who staunchly criticized President Obama in ways that are basically classless? He's gone. You can't have divisive people like that and expect them to have power and make laws and policy and then stick beyond one election. Because you can't make deals, and Eric Cantor did make deals, without working with people whose ideologies may be just a little bit different from yours and whose skin color is certainly different from yours. And if his constituents, the people that voted him out, can't understand that, then they're going to be in for a rude awakening. Now, the good news is that it wasn't all of them. It was about 55% of them. The 44% that voted for Cantor, they get it. So that district has got some problems, and so does the Republican Party.